So this is Baruch here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolo. What you see before you is part three of the thoughts, about thoughts from the ultimate connection with God, the seventh step guide, and we're going through part three in thoughts. Now let's see, thoughts actually is not where we're at. We're actually on part four, which is the power of intention, which is another word for that is Kavana. Now, there was a couple of things that I wanted to point down. I just was trying to think of. Yeah, let, let me bring us to just something that caught my eye at the time we said we were learning. This is in regards to thoughts. He says, your thoughts are things. They have physicality to them. <clears throat> he says they're in the fifth dimension. And they manifest in the fifth dimension as clearly as lightning manifests in ours. I mean, what, what does manifest mean? It means that it comes from somewhere else, but it shows up someplace. So in the fifth dimension, that is where our thoughts are located. And we have to think about what they could mean with the possibilities. This is beyond me, really. And let me read the, the next part, and uh, then we'll get into this new piece. So he said this idea as if this is something like, uh, well, you and I could just do this. So this is the great secret of how Holy Tzaddikim are able to bring about apparent miracles in nature using thought-focused kavana and sounds of the Holy Alphabet. So they have certain intention that they know how to direct their thought, and then they have sounds. They simply create a picture in their minds of an alternative reality. Understand that they, a part of the kavana is to understand what real what real reality is, or how the roots of reality, something like that. Then they channel the image of it into the power of speech. In other words, they speak words of prayers or gaze at the shem of the kadoshim. Once the enemy, uh, the energy of sound is activated, a change in the physical matter occurred at the subatomic level. So he means to say subatomic, it would be sub, 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 sub. That's how deep it has to go to a root. A new reality is created and miracle is performed. Now that's what some people could do. Let's move on because there's not that much time. It has a little bit of richos here and it's a little bit longer. So this is the Chovot HaLavavos, Shar Avos Hashem, number one. In order to connect to his higher light, was one must understand that the nefesh is a simple spiritual entity which is drawn to what is similar to itself. Now, in Kabbalah, you see this a lot in prayers. So let's understand that the higher light, the nefesh is simple, simple, is simple spiritual entity which is drawn to what is similar to itself, spiritual fires. And it naturally distances itself from what is opposite to it, which are material bodies, materialism. So he's saying the concept of Nefesh, the Nefesh is something completely and totally spiritual. It has no physicality or it's not physical. On the other hand, it, it has some relationship to these fires, which is not explained. So let's go on. Adam's original body is said to have been similar in appearance to the angels. Angels are pure through, uh, through pure thought forms, composed of higher light particles existing in the fifth dimension. Now, I may have to go over this uh, this particular shear more than once, because uh, and we'll maybe have to start again tomorrow, because I see how much time I have, and I'm thinking that this one thought right here is worth repeating. Adam's original body is said to have been similar in appearance to the angels. Now, what is the appearance of angels? Angels, he says, are pure thought forms composed of higher light particles existing in a fifth dimension. Now, this is like where your thoughts are, he had said in the previous one, is where you are. So your thoughts could be low thoughts, but they could also be very high thoughts. So, because what happens is, is that they are connected to these light forms, either good ones, or bad ones, in between, etc. The value of thought here gives us insight as to why the Torah places such strong emphasis on thought and intent, which is called kavana, and prayer in performing the ritual commandments. 
Our thoughts create things. Hmm. A shift of essence from higher light to sub-light speed should not be a foreign concept to us. Heat equals speed of movement. In other words, the more a molecular structure of things vibrates, the hotter that mass becomes. The opposite is also true. The slower something goes, the cooler it becomes. The, the known example of this is H2O, which is water. Two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen, which we know as water. When water is between the temperatures of zero and a hundred degrees Celsius, it exists in a liquid state. Below zero degrees Celsius, the, mil the molecular structure of water slows down to become solid ice. At the temperature of above a hundred degrees Celsius, liquid water turns into gas form, steam. Eventually, steam can be heated up until it further becomes plasma, a type of matter that isn't simply gas, yet is not pure energy. As it is with water, so it is with the body of man, and, they, and thus all of mankind's whose bodies are made up of about 60% water. The result of incongruent movement in the dimension of thought led Adam's essence, I gotta really get these words, uh, to slow to such an extent that it changed its essence from light to mass. Now what he's saying is, is that because that Adam got himself, he calls it Adam's, uh, in the movement in the dimension of thought, the result of incongruent movement, he calls it. In other words, he had uh, bad thoughts, tibus, uh what we call tibos, for his wife, or his, she was there. And they didn't have clothes on. But something occurred to them, and that's the incongruent movement in the dimension of thought led Adam's essence to slow to such an extent that it changed essence from light to mass, that made physicality. Instead of being like an angel, Adam became like a monkey, comparatively speaking. Yet it appears that our energy side only became encased in an outer shell of matter. This is the relationship of body and soul. Matter is ever-changing. Atoms are continuously forming new molecule structures. So it seems that Whatever energy field we call a soul, it only has a temporary ability to protect or to project a cohesive element to the molecule, molecules that form our physical body. So let's read it again. Whatever field of energy, he said, we call a soul. So therefore, he said that a field of energy is a soul. Soul is a field of energy. It only has a temporary ability to protect project a cohesive element to the molecules. In other words, stick onto the molecules that form our physical bodies. Yet at some point, this cohesive ability either breaks down or intentionally has within it a type of self-destruct mechanism. That's the nature of physicality. That is, the cohesive ability has to break down. This is the aging process, which results in the inevitable, de inevitable death of the physical body. Now, let's see what else he says. Let me move this over here a little bit. So he says, from a Kabbalistic tradition, though, it does not seem that this process is absolute. We have two examples of humans who have transcended the physical plane by transforming into light bodies. These two are Enoch and Eliyahu Anavi, both spoken about in the Torah. The change itself is a rather interesting one, or according to a Kabbalistic legend, their bodies were turned into fire. Now everyone knows that if one's flesh were to combust, one would be burnt to death. Therefore, this is some other type of fire. Yet, if the transfer of, transfer of matter into energy is performed by the speeding up of molecular structure to the speed of light, this generates a large amount of heat. This is most likely the reason why angels and other entities of that nature are said to possess bodies that glow like brass or gold. Their forms are not made of matter as we know it, but rather of a pure energy, concealing an appropriate form for the sake of their individual earthly mission. Let's read it again one time. We're talking about malachim here. Malachim, that is angels. Their forms are not made of matter as we know it, but rather of pure energy, 
congealing, and it congeals in an appropriate form for the sake of their individual earthly missions. Such form is discarded once the entity returns to its own dimensional plane of existence, which is non-physical. Such a case is mentioned in Tanakh, referring to an angel that visited the parents of Shimshon, Samson, a Jewish judge who would possess tremendous strength. Once the angel finished his message, scripture mentions how the angel disappeared in a puff of smoke. Now, standard human intelligence does not conceive of matterless forms of pure energy. So, by ourselves, we wouldn't think of this, which are constructs of thought existing in the fifth dimensional plane. Play. Now, one, one, one more time. Our standard intelligence does not conceive of something, I think, which is matter, uh, matterless, has, is non-physical, and it's a form of pure energy. I read it like that. Which are constructs of thought, which are what? Constructs of thought existing in the fifth dimensional plane. Now, this is far out. Yet these entities exist up and above our awareness, or lack of. When interacting with us, these entities must project a type of visage through their natural medium of the mental plane. So he's talking all about thought. It is only in this way that average humans are able to cognize non-matter forms of life. Thus, when one of these entities appears, it actually is harmonizing slowly its vibrational frequency of whatever forms of particles or strings that form its existence. Something like this. It doesn't have to be that it's momish strings. But something like this, and he's talking about waves and vibrations. So he says, with an appropriate match within the individual's subjective mind, such an entity does not need to take on mass and thus slow down its personal modulation to that point. It simply communicates with the human in that one dimension that we share, the realm of thought. Now, he's saying something which sounds like to me like this, is that our thoughts, our thoughts are in the 15th dimension and they are a malachim in a certain way. That they carry a certain wavelength and they carry, they carry it where it goes and it is a reality. But it's a reality manifest in the 5th dimension. Now, the 5th dimension probably uh, is a opening to... The totally non-spiritual, uh, excuse me, the totally spiritual dimensions. As mentioned earlier, the proof that radio waves and other such frequencies exist is because we have the necessary instruments such as radios, mobile phones, etc. that can detect them. So we can also be considered as devices by which communication with angels, souls, and the like is possible. Let's see if we can get down low enough to read this little blurb. He says, Angels simply communicate with the human in that one dimension which we share, the realm of thought. This is Baruch Fleischman. I can kind of tell you that I'm going to do this again tomorrow, but maybe shorter, maybe, uh, yeah, shorter and maybe in pieces. We'll see how it goes. This is Baruch Fleischman.